Hi, I'm Louise and this is the Pilates for Busy People weekly show. This week I talked to Priya True, a Pilates teacher and dietitian, who you might recognise from the BBC programme Eat Well for Less. But this week we talk about the pelvic floor and how important it is to keep it strong and functional so that as women we can live our lives and do the things we want to do, for example running or jumping up and down on the kids' trampoline. So if you are a runner and fed up with injuries or want to improve your running technique, then why not come and have a look at my Facebook group, Pilates for Runners. It's a lively community with lots of specific Pilates for Runners workouts in the group. I'll add the link, link below so that you can find out more. But now let's get on with the main part of the show. Hi, and welcome to this week's Pilates for Busy People weekly show. This week I have Priya True on with me. Um, welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure and thank you for coming. So would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? So my name's Priya Chu. Um, I run a Pilates studio down in Southampton. I specialise in pre and postnatal work, but also teach um, the reformer and the chair and normal classes as well. And I've got a team of four other teachers that work with me. All oh, right, well done. <laughs> Yeah, that really helps, doesn't it? So, uh, so today I wanted to talk about um, the pelvic floor because it's a really big thing well, for us women. And um, men, actually, isn't it? So you specialise in the holistic core restore. Um, it's a course, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that and and the importance of um, why we need a functional pelvic floor? Love to. So pelvic floor is something I'm really passionate about because I think it's something that we just don't talk about enough. So you might talk about, oh, I think my core's a bit weak, or, you know, when I do such and such, I get a pain in my shoulder. But we don't tend to talk to our friends about, oh, if I jump, I leak a bit, <laughs> or, you know, I've got pain in my pelvis. It's not something we tend to talk no, no, about. No, no, okay? not at all. But it's another part of the body which can really affect everything else that's going on. So I've got Priscilla, my pelvis here. <laughs> name things. So if I turn the side on, you can see that here we've got the big bony part of the hip, and then right at the back here we've got the coccyx and the sacrum. So we've got the end of your back, as it yeah, were. Yeah, and that, that's really good because I just sorry, this is an aside because I'm always telling people about their coccyx and trying to pull it underneath them and things like that to get that lovely curve. And so it's quite nice to visually see it. So yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, so this is what it looks like. But what's really interesting is that your pelvic floor actually attaches right in to your coccyx. Uh -huh. So some people describe it as the coccyx is like the rudder of the ship mm -hmm. and it steers the way your spine goes and it also can steer the direction that your pelvic floor goes and has a bit, big impact on that. So if you've got damage to your coccyx, that could affect your pelvic floor, for example. And then if we turn over, we get the uh, side that we don't look at so often. So there's not many people who kind of have a good view of their pelvic floor. But you can see how large the pelvic floor is. So I think a lot of the time people think about the pelvic floor being a muscle, and it's not. It's a group of muscles. Yep. We've got superficial muscles and we've got deeper muscles. So we have got here the pelvic floor attaches into the coccyx as i said but then it attaches into the bony protrusions here so this is um basically your inner thighs yeah okay so if your inner thighs are not very strong or maybe you lean slightly to one side and one works stronger than the other that's going to affect your pelvic floor so this muscle will get pulled and then we've also got the pelvic floor attaching right in at the front. So I think most people know your pelvic floor attaches yeah. right at the front where the pubic bone is. Okay. So that's kind of the interesting bit about the pelvic floor is it attaches into so many muscles and it attaches into the bony part of your pelvis. And I don't think many people realise that at all. I think you're right. No, I think we assume because this is sometimes how it's talked about. It's a hammock that hangs between your legs. Mm -hmm. so you kind of think hangs down and it's magically holding itself there but actually it's quite securely attached and I sometimes describe it as a trampoline so yeah. it's got attachment points around the pelvis and um, it's quite securely fastened but with a trampoline you could get sagging one side and tightness the other side yeah no it's true 
so good when you bounce on it, is it? No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> and it's the same with the pelvic floor. So the other thing I like to talk to people about in terms of pelvic floor, so I like to have all the toys. Um, I this love these toys. Is an example. <laughs> this is actually a children's toy. <laughs> so <laughs> this is a really nice example of, for example, if one part of your body is too tight or is pulling one direction, so if I hold this part and I pull, you can see the effects on the rest of the body. Yeah, so it's the same with the pelvic floor. If you've got one part of your pelvic floor that isn't working as it should yeah or you've got one part of your body for example say you've got a tight glutes your bum is tight on one side because perhaps you've been standing to one side holding a child on your hip for a period of time yeah that's going to make everything in your body slightly skewed and that's going to also affect your pelvic floor okay so you can see how yeah, and that happens a lot, doesn't it? Because whenever we focus on glute exercises in, in Pilates classes, there's always one weaker and one, you know, stronger. And, and for all the reasons you've said, and for other reasons as well. But yeah, yeah. Right. So even, like even if someone does a shoulder bridge, you know, your classic squeeze your hips up and come back down, you'll quite often see that they lean slightly to one side or the person will feel, oh, this side's stronger than that side. And it, it's kind of like, why is that happening? And that will be having an impact on other things in the kinetic chain throughout the body. Yeah. So why am I so passionate about the pelvic floor? It would be because that's pretty much our foundation. So when we talk about the core, we do talk about the pelvic floor as blood is teaching, but we also talk about the lower abdominals and we talk about the obliques and we might talk about the lower back and the diaphragm. Actually the pelvic floor sits right at the base of all of that. So you want like to build it together, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It does. And you want to build upon a strong foundation. And when we take a big inhale, so one of the first things I teach anyone when they come to see me is breathing. And when we teach someone to breathe, we want to be inhaling, sending that air into the ribs and into the tummy, but also down into the pelvis. And this was really eye-opening to me. I had no idea after all of my training that when I breathed, air went into my pelvis. Oh. So I was kind of like, you know, my tummy gets bigger, my ribs expand, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But I hadn't actually felt my pelvic, my pelvic floor relax and thought about the idea of that air going into That's the driving. pelvis. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, there's not a lot in there. No. There's something there. It's got to, it's got to go there air does go down there and so when you exhale you actually want to try and empty the air right from the bottom of your pelvis upwards and often we can do that from the belly button we yeah. kind of think within the belly button we breathe out of the belly button and we don't mind to think about anything lower than the belly button because that's not so nice we just don't talk about it enough do we? you're right we just don't talk about it at all and it's we do. Um, but we all have issues and especially either after childbirth or as we get older, which is probably from childbirth in the first place, isn't it? But well, it's also hormones. So when you get towards perimenopause and the menopause, your hormone levels, levels of estrogen are going to decline. That's going to affect your pelvic floor. So, so why, why do we as women <laughs> just carry on with it? And it stops us doing the things that we want to do. So I run. I don't go on the trampoline anymore because I am at that menopausal stage. So, you know, yeah. I'm there. But, you know, I don't, I find the trampoline a hard thing to do now. But I shouldn't do, should I? No, I mean, it's great that you can run. And I think that there's a lot of women who do get back into running. But even with running, you, firstly, you don't want to get back to running too, too soon. No. Nope. So I always try and encourage my postnatal ladies to wait till six months if I can get them to hold off that long. Ooh, Depending on their experience. I've yeah. certainly got some marathon runners who will go back sooner than that. Um, but, you know, with running, you've got that impact that's coming through your foot all the way up your leg into your pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. And you do kind of, I come across women who are going back to running and they can maybe do 5K, but they can't do any more than that because that's when they get problems. Yeah. And that's just your pelvic floor saying, I can withstand this much. Now I've had enough. Yeah. Now I'm tired. So but, it's, but it is about, 
it's not all just about the running is it or any other sport you want to do especially when you've got that and and i know that that's what you want to talk about as well is the impact so i do pilates for runners which is specifically for runners um so we change it a little bit from normal pilates classes and there's a lot of standing work because we've got other things that we need to work on as well but you are going to focus more on the pelvic floor aren't you with with what you're going to do So I teach postnatal Pilates. My kind of progression with people is I, I have people during pregnancy and I work with them there. And then I have people postnatally and we have the babies in the session and it's carnage, but also a lot of fun. And we work on just the initial breathing and finding the pelvic floor and almost getting people back into community and moving. Yeah. And then what I have found really works well is the holistic core restore um branding so this is a group of courses the initial one that i teach is something called every woman and this is a booklet for every woman Mm -hmm. and this is all about getting women who have got some pelvic floor issues so that might be that they leak a little bit when they jump on a trampoline um it could (laughs) be when they're sneezing so the old sneeze pee um it could just be that they've had a baby and you know it's four months post baby and they know that there's some problems there or it could be that you know that just in case we where you're kind of feeling like i can't i don't know if i can trust my pelvic floor yeah. so i'm going to have to go we so it's those kinds of things or people who've got a small abdominal separation and this is a six week course which takes you from how do you breathe to functional exercises that are going to help your pelvic floor so everything is cued so there are squats and lunges and band work and all kinds of things in there but it's with a real focus on where's your coccyx yeah where's your pubic bone let's engage pelvic floor let's lift pelvic floor as we're doing the movement and the best thing i think about the course one of the best things is you get all your homework online so go away you do a face-to-face and you learn it you go away you do your homework and then you come back and you tell everybody else how awful it was or how wonderful it was and there's a really nurturing kind of community around it so my ladies this week we always have an education part and so we might talk about weeing that's always a great one (laughs) um or we might talk about this week it's been nutrition a bit kind of safer topic and also i'm a dietitian so that's always a good one and so they're putting pictures of their meals up in a whatsapp group and everyone's kind of commenting and going back and forth and saying can i have that recipe and oh that's a really good one because of the fiber that's in it so it's not just about pelvic floor it's the whole it's the whole lifestyle thing again isn't it basically yeah it's a lifestyle thing and, and stress, for example, talk about stress and because yeah. stress has a massive impact on the pelvic floor as well. If you're stressed, you're either going to be holding on to your pelvic floor and gripping for all your worth, or you're just not going to be using it at all. Yeah. So, so these, these courses, I know that, that, that you are specific trained in this and I know there are a few other people, but people can go online and find out where the nearest class yeah. is for that, can't they? Um, there, there is a holistic chorus store website and you can click to find the local coach to you. Yeah. But there I'm not sure if there's there's around. Like, Sorry? I, I'm not sure if, who, is, who does it around here, so I need to look into that to, uh, so I can put it. Yeah, put it, in it would be interesting to connect with them. Also, there are some trainers who will do it online with you, so if there's no one local to you, you can then do that. you can do it yeah. online. That's brilliant. So, so once uh, once people have started to understand their pelvic floor and they're getting a, a little bit stronger with it, and you know things are a lot easier for them, then what do you, you you sort of so if someone did want to start running, um, mm. but with uh, or other impact sport, I suppose it is really, isn't it? Yeah. What, what other things can they do uh, as well as doing? Well, let's- Thing. So when you've got somebody who is wanting to go back to running or when you're moving your body full stop, you think about these bits here are your pelvic floor. This might not be so easy to see, but there's four black bits of elastic here and these are your pelvic floor and these are your legs. And when you move, your pelvic floor moves. Yeah? Yep. And the same as when you, you if you were to squat down, then your pelvic floor is going to move as well. 
Yeah. So it makes sense that we want to train the body in a functional way. We want to use things like squats and lunges and going down to the floor and coming up because that's what we do in everyday life. Yeah. And if you're coming back to running, that's even more important. So you need to be able to work out, you know, how do you lift your leg up? How do you put it back down again? How do you suddenly leap and yeah. your pelvic floor works? So the next stage on, I think, is something that's really been missing. And um, I have started to launch something called Athlete 12, which is, again, is part of the Holistic Core Restore offerings. And this is really great because it's all online. Um, and it's 12 weeks. So yeah. it's quite a long period of time for you to work on it. And it's 12 weeks of online classes, and you get a class or a workout every week from Jenny Burrell, who's the founder of Holistic Core Restore. And then you get a workout every week from me. And mine's going to have some more Pilates and stretch type things in there as well. Right. So it's not all about the impact. Yeah. And then you also get the kind of chatter around nutrition and stress reduction and sleep quality and all those things. And you get to kind of hang out with whoever else is doing the course and chat to them as well. And that, and that is that community, isn't it? Because once you, I mean, you can see it in Facebook groups all over the place, can't you, for whatever, whatever, Pilates, running, whatever. It's just that starting to talk about the problems that you have and knowing that you're not alone doing it, which I think is really, really important. So, yeah. uh, so, that, so that's great. So if we put all the links below to your, your courses and the ones, um, the athletic 12 which sounds fantastic and a really good thing to to do um because you don't as a woman we don't need to be having all these problems we you know everything is fixable in my eyes most things anyway but um both things are definitely fixable and i think also as women we don't always think that we need to train or that we need to get strong whereas athlete 12 is not about you know it's not about being a bodybuilder but no. it's about your body fitter and stronger so you can go back to the next stage of life yeah, and it was interesting because uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I'll put the video up here, I never know which side it is, um, uh, I talked to a menopausal expert, um, and we were talking about the changes in your body, obviously, through the menopause, and how you needed to change your lifestyle and your exercise, and one of the things that was coming up through that was that you needed to do weights, you needed to do more functional training, not yeah. just go out for a run and hope that everything was going to be all right. So I think as we start to get older that we need to realise that there's other things we need to do so that we can do the things we love. Sorry, yeah. I got on a bit of a, <laughs> get on my pedestal about that, <laughs> but yes. Brilliant, brilliant. So thank you so much for that, Priya. That's been excellent. And I hope people have found it really, really Very interesting. Um, and I love all the pelvic floor toys and stuff. So that's made it, for me, it's made it so clear. And I know, I know stuff about it. So yes, brilliant. Thank you very much for coming on. That's okay. I really hope you enjoyed this week's show. If you have experienced any problems with your pelvic floor that we talked about, and realise that you need to strengthen it, then why not check out Priya's course, Athletic 12? I'll put the link below. And make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you don't miss next week's show. See you next time.